Okay, so this is the interview for the 1960s. Do you remember the United States and the Soviet Union competing to get up to space first? Yes. And Kennedy uh, said that he was going to put a man on the moon, and he worked very hard. That was a big thing for him. Do you um, remember when Kennedy got assassinated? Yes, I do. And I wasn't too happy that about Lyndon Johnson being his vice president, having to take over for him. But uh, the, yeah, that was a disaster. Everybody loved Kennedy and uh, his family. It was he had a beautiful wife and uh, the kids uh, running around the White House was really something. Um, so do you remember Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty? Yes, but uh, primarily I was uh, thinking more about his, his efforts in the Vietnam War. He tried to escalate that and uh, it really didn't work. I was in the uh, Naval Reserves at the time, and I can remember uh, everybody being concerned that they were going to have to go over there. They were killing them. our military people like flies over there. Do you did you know anybody who got sent over to Vietnam? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the Civil Rights Movement? Yes, I remember that. The March on Washington. Not so much at all. Well, you mean Martin Luther King? Yeah. March on Washington. Yes, I remember that. That was a big deal, and the press covered it uh, widely. Primarily, they're having it was uh, the problem was bigger in the South than it was uh, in the North. And I, we were we lived in Michigan at the time, so uh, we, you know, it didn't seem uh, that much that we weren't affected that much by it. Uh, the affirmative action program that ensued afterwards uh, it affected the work, workers all over, and especially in, uh, in Michigan. Um, did you know about the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Bay of Pigs mm -hmm. with Kennedy? Yeah, that was a failure. The Bay of Pigs was a failure. Uh, Fidel, it was a little before 1960 though when Fidel Castro was revolutionary and turned into a communist country. Uh, but it was in the 60s, I think, that he nationalized Sears Roebuck in Cuba, also Coca-Cola in Cuba, he took them over and uh, nationalized those two. That was significant. Um, and then, do you remember when President Nixon got elected? Yes, I voted for him. <laughs> uh, and uh, Hubert Humphrey, I think, was his uh, vice president. But, uh, I remember that, yes. Is there anything else you remember about foreign policy in the 1970s? Or the 60s? 60s? No, uh, the, uh, it was primarily uh, the uh, it started the cold, uh, what we call the Cold War. And uh, with Russia, and uh, that was sticks in my mind more than anything else. All right, thank you. Thank you. Go. Okay, so now we're, I'm going to interview you about the 1970s. Um, what do you remember about Henry Kissinger? I remember Henry Kissinger. He was Secretary of State, of course, for Richard Nixon. And uh, he had a very unusual voice when he spoke, but he was very intelligent. And uh, he really, he was in charge mostly of all the foreign affairs. And he, you know, he was Nixon's right-hand man, and he made most of the decisions. Okay. So he had, like, a lot of power. He had a lot of power. Secre Secretary of State, even today, has a lot of power. Yeah. And what do you remember about the economy during the 1970s? The economy, uh, I remember that interest rates were very high. Um, the uh, industrial uh, factory lines, they were slowing down. People were being unemployed. Um, 
um, I, I just remember that to, in order to purchase homes and cars, the interest rates were like in the 12%. Wow. 12% range. That's higher than it is today. Do you <laughs> know how high it is today? No. In or, the did you say three? Three and a half to four percent. Wow. Um, and what do you remember about the Watergate crisis? The Watergate crisis was a, a very big deal. Uh, Nixon and his clan were trying to hide up. Nixon had created a lot of presidential power, and um, during Watergate, uh, they had uh, they they were accused of of the power and abuses in the presidency, and of course he didn't want to come forward with everything they were doing. But then that's what happened. They broke in uh, to the Watergate, and it was Watergate was a building, and uh, that's when you know the the news press. I think his name was Bob Woodard and somebody else started investigating what was going on, and that's how they found out what was happening with the abuse of power, and, and it led to Nixon's resignation. Yeah, so like, did the public, did they know like a whole bunch about it? Oh yes, they did. I mean, it was just advertised uh, similar to, you know, what Fox News is doing today on Benghazi, which mm -hmm. the president in the White House won't come forward with, with their, with the right idea, with, with what they did. Yeah. So and we still, to this day, don't know, but at least in the Watergate, we know what they did. Yeah. So was the country just shocked, like, that the president would... Well, I think, I think they were happy that they found out what the scandal was and that he was actually forced to resign, which is how it should be. Yeah. And Jimmy Carter, he was elected towards the end of the 70s? He was, but I don't remember much about him except that he was a peanut farmer from Georgia. <laughs> And um, the Vietnam, some soldiers were coming back. They were so, coming back. Do you remember the, seeing soldiers? Oh, well, so many of the, the young men that I graduated with, with from high school were in the Vietnam War. And, um, you know, when they came, of course, you know, some of them came back and without any injuries. And some of them were killed. And it was a terrible war. And so when they were coming back, I mean, it was like the Americans didn't really open their arms to them because they didn't believe in the Vietnam War for one thing. Yeah. And you know, today the Viet the veterans are still complaining about how they were treated, the ones that served, how they were treated yeah. and in the reception they received when they came home. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so tell me your overall impression of the nineteen eighties. Okay, well the nineteen eighties started with a launch. And ended with the tank thing. You see, in, in 1981, you had the launch of the very first space shuttle, the Columbia. <clears throat> At the end of the 80s, 1989, you had to take down the Berlin Wall. So, in one case, it opened things up, the others, it opened up in both ends. And the 80s belonged to one man, basically, and that's Ronald Reagan. Uh, he was elected president. He took the White House in 81, 89. He, um, we were coming off record inflation and unemployment and just the absolute dread, dregs of the, excuse me, Carter administration when Ronald Reagan brought hope to America again. And Reaganomics was uh, what came to be known, uh, our supply side economics, uh, came to be known as Reaganomics. So he defined the economy basically for the 80s. And he did that by lowering taxes, by deregulation, uh, and by uh, really opening the opportunities for uh, free enterprise to, to really flourish. Um, what are some of the things you remember about foreign policy? Well, <laughs> well, uh, foreign policy was a huge deal because, excuse me, <coughs> we were uh, in the middle of the Cold War uh, with Russia and the Soviet Union, and uh, uh, Reagan basically won the Cold War. It's like amazing how he basically brought down the Soviet Union, brought them to the negotiating table where they had been sort of uh, seen in the 70s as, these, as the ones holding the, the, the positions of power 
uh, Reagan just brought him to the table. And, uh, and so he won the Cold War without firing a shot. Uh, just because he would not cower, he built up our defenses. Um, he really uh, held a hard line to the evil empire. He called the Soviet Union the evil empire. That was a huge deal in the 80s, uh, coming from the Star Wars movies. And uh, uh, Reagan identified the Soviet Union as that. So eventually, he and Mikhail Gorbachev, who was the president of the Soviet Union, uh, had a treaty and, and basically disarmed or at least reduced arms a lot between the two countries. And so Reagan won the Cold War. And, and no symbol was greater than that than the Berlin Wall being torn down. I remember seeing the, the day it was coming down, it was just like people were captivated watching on television. And it started with young people. You know, they were uh, on really both sides of the wall. Just went up and started chipping away. And uh, I remember seeing a real young kid just chipping away with a soldier, and these German soldiers standing there watching. You know. And it was just, by that time, it was powerless. They couldn't, the wall had to come down. It was really cool. What are some, like, domestic policy things that you remember in the U.S.? Well, uh, Reagan was very pro-life. And so uh, the abortion battle uh, was really heated during his, his time. Uh, he chose very pro-life and conservative justices. I, don't, I really don't remember how many or who uh, specifically, but uh, he, wrote a, he wrote a great book. It's just a little, in fact, I've got a hard copy of it somewhere called Abortion and the, Con and the Conscience, Conscious of the Nation where he uh, really laid out his pro-life policy and uh, so that was that was a huge thing. Uh, as far as other domestic policies, most so much of it was tied to uh, the economics of his era and what happened uh, in the midst of all that. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank other than the abortion. So what do you remember about the 1990s? Okay, uh, pop culture, just real quick, some things I remember. Uh, Princess Diana was killed in a car wreck, uh, which is just, you know, sad, you know. Um, Michael Jordan retired from the NBA twice. Um, I think he even tried baseball. Um, what else pop culture? O.J. Simpson, uh, somewhat pop culture, is kind of sad, uh, was tried for his ex-wife's murder. Um, Y2K, everybody was showing up food and water for the, you know, the end of the world coming when everything rolled over in 2000. Um, what do you remember that was happening, like, around the world, not in the U.S. in the 90s? The Gulf War would be the first thing that comes to mind when I was teaching school in rural preschool. And uh, I had students and family members coming over uh, to, you know, to fight and uh, Desert Storm and... Uh, even nursing trading cards with Norman Schwarzkopf's picture, and he went in. He was the ground commander and general, and he went in and took charge. And uh, they had an air raid, and then on the ground, and uh, that was I remember from the nineties. And then uh, in Ru the Rwandan civil war and uh, genocide that uh, heard of, but then got firsthand information when. Uh, we met someone that lived through it as a child, and you know, when we were being hurried out of their house, uh, when someone busted down their front door, and uh, their parents, who were well educated Christians, as far as he knows, were killed that day. He never saw them again, and he and his brothers and sisters fled through the woods with their house So that was the end of that. Um, the Oklahoma bombing, um, Timothy McVeigh. And you know that an American would hurt and harm innocent women and children and, and, and men in a building. You know, so that that remember watching that and watching firemen carry babies and when children out was so sad. Uh, Waco, Texas, uh, a division I think of the Seventh Day Adventist Division cult, you know per se. The uh, ATF thought that there was, they were having even illegal weapons and trafficking or something. But anyway, they were going to raid it, and they think they were tipped off, and there was gunfire, but then a fire was started, and 
hundreds were killed inside, and they're not sure who started the fire, so that was sad. Um, who were the presidents during the uh, George H. W. Bush and Clinton. Do you, what do you remember about their policies and things like that? Probably not as much as I should, Mr. <laughs> but uh, NAFTA, which they, NAFTA, which they both supported, which was a, a treaty with trade between Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Um, I remember Clinton with the "Don't ask, don't tell" in the military. Um, I'm not sure if that's still in policy and effective today, but I remember that. I also remember Hillary and Laura having a cookie baking contest. I think there was a chocolate chip versus, I think maybe Oakland Rays, I don't remember. I think Hillary won that with chocolate chip. But I do remember that. I like to bake. Um, UK won three NCAAs, I believe, in the 90s, which would be a big thing. Um, Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, passed away in the 90s. And Mother Teresa also passed away in the 90s. Her life was celebrated. Now, so Mandela was free, but the biggest events of the 90s, 93, 94, and 97, Abby and Sarah were <laughs> biggest events of the 90s. Okay, thanks.